And we're back. Okay, so we left off. We were kind of uh, a little bit rushed, but hopefully this the general concept here makes sense. This is, um, and actually the specifics, I guess, because we went through the formula here. So we came up with our, and this is uh, part two of the uh, elasticity, and we started with the supply and demand. Hopefully that all made sense. And then we're coming back to el- elasticity. And wh- while we're going through this, I want you to think in terms of Jack. What's he thinking? What's he going through right now? So we know that for Jack, with this elasticity of two, what that means is every 1% that we raise the price or that we change the price at all, there's going to be a 2% change in quantity demanded. Okay? So one to two, basically, which means that it's uh, – a little more sensitive than we might want for Jack. And if we ever want to test our uh, number here to see if we came up with, if you ever want to test your calculations, hopefully that made sense. The price over quantity, this is the original price, original quantity. So we started with the original price of 20, the quantity of 100. So we had 20 over 100 times the change, delta change in quantity over change in price. The change in quantity from 100 to 50 is 50. And then the change in price from 25 to 20 is 5, so 50 over 5. So you had 20 over 100 times 50 over 5, and then we canceled out. Our 20 became, you know, basically we got 2 over 1 here. Then we got 1 over 1 here, which is 1. So 2 over 1 times 1 over 1, 1. 2 times 1 is 2. So that's what we, uh, that's how we came up with our 2. Now let's go back here just to make sure, and if, you got, if you're getting this and uh, you're watching this in a class, make sure that other people are following along and that they are understanding this well. Let's plug this back in here and see if this is um, accurate. From 20 to 25, that's a, what percentage of a jump is that in our uh, price? What percentage of a jump is that in our price? Let's think about that for a second. I know you guys all got the same answer. 25%, right? We had a 25% increase in our price, right? So that means that based on our formula, if it's 1% means a 2% change in quantity demanded, we should see a 25% change in our quantity, or I'm sorry, 25 times to a 50% decrease in our quantity demanded. So let's go back here and look at 100 and 50. What's the difference there? We had a 50% drop and quantity demanded. So our formula held true and it was consistent and this is P1 and P2 again. So if we look at our P1 here, this was $20 and then our P2 is 25. So what that means, our elasticity of two, and by the way, these are negative. We also talk about negative, positive numbers. We're ignoring that because we are going to have like a negative over a positive or a positive uh, over a negative or a negative a negative over a positive or a positive over a negative, positive over negative, negative over positive. Either way, or you could on either, on either one of these um, in our numerator or denominator. But we're going to ignore all that. We're just going to, uh, ignoring the, that, um, look at the absolute value, basically, so we come up with two. So when we plug that back in here, we see that that's accurate. That works out, that, that we did our math correctly, right? Now, this was one formula for determining... Uh, our elasticity, and if you remember from our notes of what we were going to go over, our uh, points here, where is that stuff? Okay, here it is. We had two main points, remember? We had two main PED formulas uh, for calculating uh, elasticity. Because when we come back here, if we look at this, this assumes that we have an amount, but or an, an actual, we have something other than a percentage. What happens when we have a percentage? When we have a percentage, we're going to use uh, a version of this formula. We're basically going to put percentage of the change of quantity demanded over the percentage of change I could do a better change there change in price so this is another version of determining our elasticity okay so the, the, these are our two main versions here two main formulas one is percentage one is without a percentage and either way if we we could plug this back in we'll come up with the same thing and we come up with our our two here. What this means for Jack, which is what really this is all about, because when we come down, when it comes down to looking at Jack's role as the supplier, and we can actually calculate his revenue, right? We don't need because these numbers are so easy to use. We can say twenty times a hundred, P one times Q one, P one Q one, and then compare that to P two times Q two, twenty five times fifty, and we can see that. He's actually going to lose money if he raises the price here. So this is bad news for Jack because that means every 1% he raises the price, he sees a 2% drop 
and his quantity demanded, and that is, there's Jack, he looks a little Chinese there, but he's unhappy about that, right? So as we're moving along here, uh, with uh, hopefully you're following along, what we really want to see is how can Jack create this elasticity or inelasticity in his business? How can he raise his prices without seeing this sudden drop? And to really get to that point, we need to understand elasticity uh, a lot more. So let's talk about, this is our curve here, or our uh, graph here. We've got price here and quantity here. And we're going to start to talk about something very cool when it comes to our demand line. So this is our demand curve, right? It looks something like that. Normally we think of the demand curve being as just this. There's nothing else to it. But actually there's quite a bit, and we'll get to that. First, well, I should, why don't we talk about this first? We came up with our values, basically, right? With um, our, uh, we came up with a, we just talked about how we can determine the mathematical value for elasticity. So let's talk for a second about what the different types, basically. You're going to have, essentially, when we determine that value that we had for elasticity, we're going to come up with, basically, we're going to categorize it into five basic um, numerical values. One is zero. When the elasticity is zero, that means it's perfectly, it's what's called perfectly inelastic. This is the, uh, you know, the dramatic case where getting, trying to get my handwriting right. See, I try to rush for you guys and I get, uh, it gets a little sloppy. Perfectly inelastic. What that means basically is that a change in price makes no difference whatsoever to the quantity demanded. Okay? Then we have zero to one. Anything less than one is what's called inelastic. Okay? Inelastic. And then we have what is actually one. One is called unitary elasticity. I'm just going to abbreviate elasticity. All right? And then we have one, two, infinity. That is elastic. And then we have one final value when we actually reach infinity. And that is perfect. Just like this was perfectly inelastic up here, this is perfectly elastic. And this happens like in those... Um, Wow, this is getting a little, say, perfectly elastic, okay? And, uh, and you don't get to do the abbreviations with, with your notes. You have to write it all out, all right, And <laughs> as you're teaching it, okay? So um, if you're, again, as always, if you're moving along with the calculations or anything like that, you definitely want to make sure that you're helping somebody else uh, get to that point that you're at. So these are our five different uh, points here, our five main, anytime we calculate our elasticity, Basically, we're going to end up with some variation of this. And here, a perfect, perfect elasticity, this is like in markets that are perfectly competitive where um, even the slightest change has uh, you know, crazy ramifications. This is, these are the two extremes, zero, perfectly inelastic, and perfectly elastic. We are running short on time here, so I'm going to finish up by talking about this curve, and then we'll come back and really harp on this uh, and really talk about what this means to your activities. Okay, let's say our curve here. This is our demand curve. I'm going to make the, this is our standard demand curve, right? This is what we usually see. What we don't see are the extensions of it because in reality, we could plot this guy out here and we could plot this guy out here. And what we'll see is two things that are going to happen. One is that our demand curve will actually intersect with our y-axis, okay? And at the point that it intersects, something very cool happens. And then we also see that our demand curve will also intersect eventually if we drag this out. It'll eventually, if you follow this out, it's already there. We don't have to drag it or do anything. It's already there. It's just usually we don't represent the entire line. We see only a small window of it. But eventually it will hit our x-axis, which is our quantity. All right, now this means some very, uh, this gives us I'll let, okay, we got to end this episode real quick. What this give? Okay, there's a few different things here. This is true with any linear line, really. But uh, with this line, we have an endpoint, endpoint here, and then the midpoint is one. All right, we're gonna have to end that, and then we're gonna pick up exactly right here where we left off.